Hi folks, welcome to another Stall13.com video. Welcome to the buying and selling horses category, by the way. Um, let's talk about buying a horse. Maybe you've seen an ad on the internet. Maybe you saw a poster or flyer at a feed store. Uh, maybe this is word of mouth, what have you. In this particular category, you'll see a pre-purchase exam. So I'm just going to real fast just brush over the fact about check out the pre-purchase exam uh, video in this category of buying and selling horses. But let's talk about what do you do when you're, when you're buying a horse. You want to check the horse out. You want to make sure that the horse isn't being drugged or doped or that it hasn't been ridden and, and had all of the quote unquote buck out of it when you're going to look at the horse. If you've made arrangements on the telephone to uh, visit the horse or to go check it out, you want to bring your saddle, your pad, your blanket. You may even want to bring your bit, your head stall, your bridles, your reins. Why? Well, because on the telephone, unless the person is willing to sell some of the more intricate parts of, of tack with the horse, you want to see if your stuff is compatible with the horse. You might say, well, look, I know you're not going to sell me a saddle, but I'm interested in buying this horse. Are you willing to sell me the bridle, the head stall, the reins, the bit? And I might say, why? And say, well, those are kind of personal items, personal items with a horse. I'd like those to stay with the horse and make it easier. They might say, well, I'm not going to give them to you. And you say, well, no, of course not. I'm willing to buy them from you at a reasonable price. Or they may say, well, no, my uh, dad built this and it's not for sale. Well, then you want to make sure that you take your stuff that you're going to use on this horse to test drive the horse. That's what this is about, ladies and gentlemen. But it's about going on a test drive. If you're looking at a used car and you want to buy a used car and you're going for a test drive, what are you going to do? You want to take it on some bumpy roads. You want to see if it squeaks, it rattles. If you're not really mechanically inclined, what else are you going to do? You're going to check the car out. Have a mechanic look at the horse. Once again, pre-purchase exam video. The other thing that you want to do, and it seems kind of sneaky because it is sneaky, and I'm all about sneaky when it comes to the horse and what you're going to buy and to make sure that you don't get screwed. Let's talk about being sneaky. If you talk to somebody on the phone and you want to go look at this horse, you may want to take a horse professional with you, someone like myself, maybe your horseshoe or your farrier. You might have to buy him some lunch, maybe even pay him a little bit of money. But it's under the ruse that they don't know jack about horses. You say, well, he doesn't know anything about horses. I just brought him along because he didn't have anything to do. That opens up the door for that person to lie. It opens up the door for that person to tell you big buckets of crap and they think, they're the smartest person around their horse. They don't know that you have a horse professional there that after it's over they can look at you and say that guy was so full of himself he's lying none of those things apply. All that stuff is important when you're buying a horse. The other thing is too is let's say you've made an appointment and the guy says well what time are you gonna be here I need to know exactly when you're gonna be here. There may be a reason for that maybe they're just OCD. Maybe they're just ADD. Or perhaps maybe they want you to be there at 3 o'clock because at 2 o'clock they're going to give the horse an injection in the neck. They're going to lunge the horse, ride it, and exercise it to calm it down, to misrepresent the affability, the affableness, calmness, gentleness, and how broke, how trained is this horse. If you have an appointment at 3, what you want to do is you want to drive by the place at 2. You want to see if they're lunging a horse, if they're exercising a horse. You actually want to show up a half hour. You want to show up at 2.30, not 3. Why? Because a half hour ahead of time, if something dubious, something sneaky is going on, well, you're going to be just that much more sneakier to catch it and say, I'm really sorry we, it didn't take us as long to get here as we thought. Sorry we're a half hour early. We'll just hang out and talk and listen to the radio. Really puts them on the spot. An honest person will say, well, shoot, since you're here, let's get going. If they hem, haw around and say, well, I don't understand why you're here early, blah, 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 be suspicious. Sometimes you don't want to walk away from a horse. You want to run. And, you know, just because a car is shiny and it has really good tires and rims and the interior is really good, you may not buy it because the motor might not be any good. Just because you think a horse is pretty 
and it's a really cute horse and you would look cute on the horse, those aren't things to consider when buying a horse. You want a horse that you can do this, that you can lean on, that isn't going to kick or bite you, doesn't care when you're eating. Look how I've moved around these horses. Also, you want the new horse to fit with your horses. Look around their fences. Are their fences chewed up? Is it a cribber? There are all kinds of things to consider other than the looks and rideability of the horse. I don't know about you folks, but when I purchase a horse, once I give it a name or it comes home with me and I feed it a couple times, it's family. And I've got the horse probably for life. Things to consider. Good luck, by the way buying a horse. I hope it goes well. Please watch the pre-purchase exam video, Food for Thought. This has been another Stall13.com video. Take care of yourself and your horses.